Team Coventry, start whenever you're ready. All right. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are Team Coventry from representing the Coventry Business School UK. I am Oluwa Damlola, and here with me are Pauline, Jesse, and Duke. We'll be discussing flooding in Vietnam. We'll be expanding on the problems, followed by the responses from consultations, our developed solution, which is the floating house, and its implementation. Vietnam being one of the most affected countries has experienced extreme flooding over time, as half of its borders located towards the sea, which is a major reason why the country suffers lots of storm every year. We would base our concentration on the central province of Vietnam, which is popularly called the Central Vietnam, with about 18 cities with a very high population density, with 30.7 million people, approximately about 31% of the Vietnam's population. The Central Vietnam is also about 150,000 kilometers square, roughly over 45% of the country's surface area. I'll now hand over to Pauline, who will tell us more about the impact of flood in Vietnam. There are several natural disasters that occur. Our team selected flooding as it makes up part of the 90% of recorded disasters in the last two, 10 years. Although there are various uh, communities and countries affected by flooding across all continents, Vietnam was selected as our case study for multiple reasons, including the fact that it is one of the most disaster prone countries in the world, with approximately 70% of its population exposed to flood risk. Flooding is one of the biggest effects of climate change. Just recently, at the United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties 26, the Prime Minister of Vietnam mentioned how Vietnam is one of the hardest hit by climate change. This ties in with the significance of, of our solution. As according to UNICEF, Vietnam is one of the world's most vulnerable to and affected by climate change, specifically the sixth most affected. Our selected region, Central Vietnam, has encountered 70% of insufferable flood damage in the last two decades. There are many causes of floods, from heavy rainfall to storm surges. There are also many types of floods. The main types are inland flooding, coastal, river, and flash floods, which all occur in Vietnam. As we zone into Vietnam, which experiences flooding approximately four times a year, the impacts are catastrophic, from loss of life, to economic impacts, to damage to infrastructure and property, and psychosocial impacts. Upon our research, we found some flood statistics for the year 2020, where eight provinces in Vietnam were affected. Close to one million houses were, and properties were affected either through submersion or overall damage, and 291 fatalities were recorded. In 2017, calamitous floods caused damage of over 600 million US dollars, and 100 fatalities were recorded. And in 2016, five provinces were affected, ca causing damage to 100,000 houses. The impact of flooding affects multiple dimensions, which have a ripple effect, especially in developing countries, from educational infrastructures to the environment, to medical infrastructures, the um, livelihood, social and security. By implementing our solution, the damage to some of these dimensions can be mitigated. For example, the floating houses and infrastructures can protect life and limit the loss of life of loved ones, therefore limiting negative effects on mental health and social life, which ties in with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 3, which addresses good health and well-being. Furthermore, medication can be preserved and official documentation and educational documentation can also be preserved, uh, easing certain processes that occur post flooding. And there's a certain safety and security that come with having a home, especially after a disaster. My colleague Jesse will now speak about our proof of research and the painful aftermath of flooding. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. Reading on what my colleagues have previously said, we chose Vietnam because of one of our colleagues is actually from Vietnam, which made the issue even more relatable for, for us. For, from our research, we found some interviews conducted with Vietnamese citizens who have been affected by the flooding and their stories were more than touching. Misty spoke about how it took only about half an hour for the water to get to meters height, sparing her with little time to get anything. Miss Lee, who, who also narrated her near-death experience following the destructive nature of the flood water, making her lose literally everything and some part of her house. The president of the People Committee of Guangdian Province stressed the current need for food, water and financial aid as the people try to rebuild their life from the catastrophic impact of the flood. To prevent another occurrence like that of Miss T and Miss Lee, we derived a plan called the floating houses 
our strategy falls under the preparedness stage of the disaster management cycle. Although not a novel idea, we tweaked some of the materials to help ensure durability and longevity. Basic materials needed includes anchoring steel pipes, wood for the internal structure, recycled plastic barrels and metal sheets. The selected materials are eco-friendly and fosters the achievement of some of the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, specifically the ninth and the 11th goal, which majors on industry, innovation and infrastructure and building sustainable cities and communities respectively. The house is fit enough to house at least six people while they wait for either the water level to reduce or emergency services in case of extreme flooding. Doc, my colleague, will now help us understand the structure and its implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. So um, regarding the feasibility, we categorized it into three major aspects. The first focus is on the economic perspective. Um, you know, the cost of the house will be around 1400 USD, which already includes the material cost and the labor cost. The building time is estimated to be less than five working days, and the design of the shelter is very straightforward. It is very simple and very easy to follow, and there is indeed no architect required. In terms of sustainability, the house is made of environmental friendly and recycled materials. It has a lifespan of up to 25 years, and thanks to the simple design, the house can be built in, in, in any other part of the world, especially in developing countries, because, you know, due to climate change, the poor are the most suffering group. Finally, are the resilient aspect. You know, despite of its low cost, the house is very solid and strong that can survive multiple disaster events in a year. Well, most importantly, our solution will enhance the disaster resilience at the family level in the local community. For instance, when a 10 year old child uh, watches the news and recognizes a storm uh, or floods are coming, then he will know what to do by giving his family a hand and upload uh, the daily essentials like foods, water, and medicines into the floating house. Moving uh, on to the implementation, so we come up with two designs. The reason is because of the family culture in Vietnam. There are usually three generations sharing the same roof. Therefore, the bigger version uh, will suit uh, the majority of families in Vietnam, and it has enough room for 10 people. Another critical point um, that I want to mention is that we have contacted the local merchants and the local retailers of um, building materials in Vietnam. We can guarantee that the cost of the houses can be reduced by at least 20% if we can you know, buy in wholesale or in bulk. And um, to, sum, to summarize the presentation, I want to say that our solution, our design is not simply a house, but it is a home and it is made of hopes and dreams instead of bricks and beams. Thank you everyone for listening. If you have any questions, we are more than happy to clarify. Thank you. Wow, amazing presentation, Team Coventry. Great work. I will now open the floor uh, to the judges for Q&A. Um, and it's about one question per judge. So with that, I uh, leave it to the judges. Oh no, you're delimiting us, Maddie. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. I mean, floating houses, as you also pointed out, is nothing new and they even exist in Vietnam. So, and in fact, they exist quite a lot in Vietnam and, and, and support also the floating market ideas. And as you also in your, um, in your actual written document, um, even more point out, they can be using a storage unit and so forth as well. What I'm wondering about is do exactly that. So what in particular is your innovation and what is different in your approach from those that already exist? I'm not sure I quite understood. Uh, Pauline, would you like to answer? All right, so firstly, it's with the materials that we would be using. The houses in Vietnam, the main material is bamboo. They use bamboo for most of the materials. So we'll be implementing the metal sheets. 
And then um, building on with that solution is you find that a lot of the solutions that have been implemented for flooding are long term. So this includes the flooding forecasting systems, enhancement of um, infrastructure, and also evacuating the families to certain um, other infrastructures that have been put in place. However, with ours, it, in it involves a short term perspective. So we take into account that the water can reach uh, the people quite quickly. And the critical time for flooding is normally between 30 to 60 minutes. So with our solution, they'll be able to um, evacuate to their floating houses, or if they're already in there, then they'll be fine. Um, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I got a question, and that was a great um, presentation, by the way. The concept is, is, is amazing. Um, my question is, I see that you're going to have pilings that are going to be driven down into the ground, and you gave us a cost of 1400 to 1500 US dollars. Have you taken into account the infrastructure that's going to be required to drive those pilings into the grounds, um, you know, with the cost of a, a pile driver, cranes, manpower? Isn't that going to affect the bottom line of the cost of the of the of each individual uh, house? I know that if you mass produce them, so in a warehouse somewhere you can get them out, you know. But the actual infrastructure of of you know sending those those anchor points, how have you guys thought about that one? Um, yes, I would like to answer that question. So we have um, taking um, we have been taking into account the total cost of the house, uh, which includes the, the cost for main power, the cost for the materials, and as well as um, the transportation for the materials as well. Um, so the total cost is um, around 1400 USD, and that includes everything into the house. Uh, because we have contacted the, you know, the merchant, uh, the local merchants and the lo local resellers in Vietnam, and that is how we get the total price I hope uh, I address fully your questions. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm still like curious. Sorry, I'm just still curious. You know how we're going to drive these pilings down into the sediment into a point where it can sustain the house, and the house is going to be moving up and down. And that, you know, there's there's additional costs with 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 getting cranes out there and you know pile drivers or if there's some other technology that I'm not aware of that you're going to be planning to you know to drive the stakes down into the ground. All right. So, um, the main the metal pipe does not only put into the ground, but they will they will be concrete that keep the pipes like firmly in in one place. And uh, we have taken into account everything or the cost. Uh, included uh, in our price. Okay. All right. To just add to what he just said, um, the communities we are looking at are local communities, and they wouldn't really need the, the the crates and all of that in driving those um the the anchoring steel pipes down. It's something that could be actually manually done by either of them, since the height is not supposed to go deep down. the The idea of the um, floating house is something that can bear very minimal weight, so it doesn't really need to go down deep. That would need machineries and all of that to handle. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the great presentation. I'm just going to ask first a clarifying question. Are these homes, houses that they live in any other time and they're able to float them when it's time to evacuate? Or are these homes that they keep somewhere close to their actual home in case they need to evacuate. Um, yes. So, because I was, uh, as Pauline mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. our solution is more focusing on the short term. So, um, in normal days, the, the shelter can be used as uh, a storage. And in addition to the floating house, the citizens will have, you know, their main house, which doesn't float um, when the flood approach. And this is only an additional house that, you know, for them to, when the flood comes and they will upload everything into the house and, you know, to get over flood. I hope that makes sense. 
Yes, it does. Then it leads me to the next question. Let's assume even 30% of the population has their floating house. What implications does that have for the space? Like how viable is it to have one within storage for the event that they need to evacuate? I'm sorry, there was some noise and I didn't get your question clearly. Apologies, it's probably my laptop. I had to charge it again. Um, so I was just asking how viable is it that every household or most households will have a floating house next to their home or close to their home? So from a space perspective, are we able to, to make this work for most families or those that need it most? Um, you know, um, the the possibility for every family to have the floating house seems like um, seems like impossible. But um, you know, we have tried to reduce the cost of the house to to a mean to a minimum, so that everyone uh, can afford the house. And I I believe with the cost uh, for, uh, of fourteen hundred USD, it is possible uh, for every um, for the local community to have the floating house and um, maybe with the help from the government and um, you know non for non for profit uh, organizations I, I believe it is possible can I come back to Tony's question because it's not just a question of costs it's a question of space I yeah. mean if you look at your population density especially in the areas that you were yourself describing you have a super high population density you're typically having these tube houses and masses of tube houses in those areas. Where would you put all of these? So, okay, to add to the answer of my friend, the house is going to be occupied, at, the largest would be about 50 square meters. So that's not big enough to take so much space. From one of the examples you can see, it's just small enough to just take a bit of a space in the front of the house. And the community setting of the Vietnamese people will allow at least two families to use one of the houses if they stay in this kind of community and headness mentality. Thank you. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, also to add on, um, we do, we have noticed that with this solution, we will have to um, look for further design adjustments specific to different areas and countries. However, in Vietnam, because it is currently being done, the solution is fully viable. However, as we move into the different communities, um, the design solution will need some altering. So, so um, I, I also want to add uh, to the answer. So uh, our, our, our solution, our design is only an idea. So uh, it can expand, like for example, the local authority can build a community, community floating house instead of um, small individual house for each family. So uh, when the flood comes, like the whole community can, you know, upload their daily essentials, like upload their house uh, facilities into the community house. And then uh, instead of they have to get to the higher ground and evacuate it to a different place. So if I can ask a, a question here, I, I get the, the concept seems to be something akin to a lifeboat that, uh, that you're suggesting here. But I want to come back to the question that, uh, a question of, uh, that Jungi raised earlier on. Um, I assume that people would have access to bamboo um, uh, uh, as a readily available resource. And so my question to you as a, as a team is, um, and that would probably come at a lower cost. If this is a temporary structure meant to serve as that type of a lifeboat, um, is there not an unnecessary cost that you're building into your solution by having to pretty much import materials uh, into a space that's already congested? Um, so, so just help me with your thinking around shifting the material materials that they need for materials that I assume would not be as readily available as bamboo. 
Right, I'll be happy to answer that. So I noticed we, from our research, we observed that bamboo actually reduces the lifespan of the floating house because when they are heated by wind and water, it reduces the ability, its resilience. So we felt the metal sheet will be fit enough to also handle winds. And in cases of other countries where they are prone to more um, colder regions, I would say, the metal sheets will actually help to improve the resilience and the strength of the floating house. Thank you. Um, so I, I appreciate the most recent question because it touches on uh, the sourcing, um, but if this is not a, a piece of equipment that's locally available. Plus you also need skilled workers. Well, is, have you identified a workforce locally that would be in a position to, to actually erect these structures? Um, yes, um, we have thought of um, the, you know, the human resource to um, for the uh, feasibility uh, study of the design, and um, they are pretty like available, you know, builders and skilled workers in almost every country in the world. And Vietnam uh, is not an exception. Um, there are the workforce available there. Um, and because of the simple designs, the house can be quickly built and, you know, very easily without any trouble. Yeah. Do you have a sense of, uh, since some floating houses exist here uh, using bamboo, about how much of the community has availed themselves of this? Because I suspect that the existing solution may be slightly cheaper. If, if I can just jump in there too, then uh, I'm, I'm looking for the empowerment aspect of this. Um, would a, a existing homeowner be able to construct this for themselves? You, you know, so where's that? Um, where do you see um, the empowerment aspect of this? If I may just building on, uh, on Alman's question, and maybe frame, framing it a little, kind of uh, going a little further in the way to frame it. Um, one of the one of the things we are very interested in is how uh, the uh, solutions which you put forward help transform communities, help um, uh, establish um, new governance practices so that uh, the disaster recovery solution you come up with is in fact, is this. So whether you've spoken to members of a specific community. I'm sorry, we didn't quite get your last phrase. I think there was a glitch in the network, sorry. Oh, I just wanted to um, um, kind of have asked you. Oh, we lost you for a moment, Amade. Can you ask that again? Um, I'd like to know um, whether the group had the opportunity to discuss this with us. was uh, what the community would be able to do going forward. One, one more time, maybe. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm, uh... I could try to rephrase it because I think I got the essence of it the first time. OK, sounds great. It relates to what the community would be able to do for themselves. So the, I think the first part was whether there has been some consultation with the community themselves. And you cannot if I'm getting it right on the tape. And then secondly, then what their involvement will be. So in terms of what they can do to themselves linked to the previous question on that. All right, thank you for your question. Yes, we actually did contact um, local communities first for most especially for the cost and how long it will take. And that was where we got our estimate and the period that has three to five working days for 
this floating house to be constructed. You know, one thing I personally love about the Vietnamese is there's this community, this sense of community they have. So truly, I believe the cost will usually flow around the cost of um, buying the materials. They usually just come together to do something related to the community, especially seeing this is something that's related that, that could actually literally affect everybody. So it's something that is doable. And um, we really spoken to them. And we also actually contact, um, contacted some people who are in um, designing and all of that here in our university. And they actually helped us around these areas as well. Thank you. I believe we have time for one more question or if the judges are satisfied, um, please let me know. No further questions from me, thank you. Amade? No, no, no further question. I'm saying that, thank you. I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna to try to switch Wi-Fi. For no, our next call. no problem, <laughs> okay. With that, Team Coventry, thank you so much for your time today. Amazing presentation. Um, I echo, uh, echo the, the applause of Noni. What a uh, wonderful uh, presentation you gave today um, and great job answering the q and I will be in touch with you regarding setting up those um, mentoring sessions with one or two of our judges. Um, and also I will be inviting all of you to the November 17th announcement for the winning team. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to let me know. Uh, judges, we are gonna hop on to the final um, presentation and I will see you all there. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, Team Coventry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bye. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you.